What's going on, everybody? Welcome to part five of our Python Plays Grand Theft Auto tutorial video series thing. In this video, what we're going to be doing is building on the last video where we at least got the region of interest. Took a little longer than I was hoping, but got it. Um, and now what we're going to do is use the hue lines um, algorithm to find the lines, at least the major lines, in our image data. So. Um, we're going to keep the ROI because we're going to find lines after ROI because uh, we, it's just wasted processing to find lines outside of the region that we're actually interested in. So, uh, so the next thing we're going to do here is, uh, I guess we'll do it in process image. So after we've done the region of interest, um, we're going to have to we're basically going to do the hue lines. So we're going to say lines equals um, cv2.hue lines. And I'm sorry if that's not hue lines, by the way, if it's like half lines or something. I don't know. Someone feel free to correct me below. I always mispronounce all these names. Um, anyway, P. And don't forget the P there. Now, we feed through the processed image, which needs to be um edges you would never i mean you probably could i don't know what the result would be it probably wouldn't be good though um you want to feed through to do the hue lines again sorry if i'm mispronouncing um if you want to do those you want to make sure you're feeding through the um some sort of edge detection which in our case is the canny edge um <clears throat> to the hue lines or huff lines or whatever so processed image Ooh, I am still on screen. I'm surprised. This is such a mess. Let me at least pull up to here so I don't make the mistake and not show anything. So we feed through um, an image, imagery that has edges, just edges basically. And then what we're going to pass is a bunch of variables. The RHO is one. We're going to pass um, numpy dot pi divided by 180. This is your theta. Um, the threshold will be 180. The, I think, is it min length? Let me, let me pull up the documents. Uh, I'll link to the documents in the um, text-based version of the tutorial. It'll also be in the GitHub and all that. Um, oh, perfect. Here we go. Yeah, let me pull this up. So you can learn more about these things if you, if you want. Yeah, you've got minimum line length and then maximum line gap. So minimum line length is like, you know, how many, how long should this line um, at minimum be, right? Like, do we want to detect two pixel long lines? I don't think so. So what's the minimum length? And then sometimes through aliasing or whatever, there's a line gap. So for example, let me just pull up this image because it's really clear. So like, obviously we probably wouldn't, but if you look at this, like there's a gap between these, these detected lines. Well, from the actual image, that's actually really a line. The, the problem is the edge detection algorithm detected the e that there was an edge and then there's not an edge or something. So, um, but in reality, right, that, and that's just gonna happen with the edge detection algorithm. I'm trying to see if there's any others. Um, I don't really see one, but that's kind of an example of, of what, might, what can happen. So you, you wanna allow some sort of gap. The other thing that's happening, let me bring up the image again, is you can look at all the aliasing happening here. It's a very jaggedy. So like, for example, these aren't touching. I can't get any closer, but these aren't really touching. Um, so that is likely to be a problem um, very shortly from now. Okay, <clears throat> so um, 180 for the threshold. Um, what was it, max line, min line length? Let's go with uh, 20. I'm pretty sure that's in pixels. And then max line gap, um, <laughs> 15, I don't know. I mean, this will all probably be tweaked later on, but we just I just want to get somewhere. So what this does is returns an array of arrays that are the, that contain the lines, which is kind of weird. And I'll show you what I mean, but it's going to mess with us just like this wanted us, uh, uh, the brackets around it it's going to return to us something similar. I don't know why it thinks that way, but it does. So it's going to return lines based on the edge image that you throw pass through it. So all we have are, are just coordinates, x, y, x, y. So x1, y1, 
x2, y2, and that, and if you drew a straight line between those, those are the lines it found. Okay, we gotta draw these lines. So rather than muddy up this one, I'm gonna create a draw underscore lines function. Doesn't exist, we're gonna create it, but for now, we're just gonna say what we'd like to be able to do is draw lines where? On the processed image, and then with what? The, the lines that we just found. Okay. So now let's do the draw lines function. So it does just somewhere around here. Um, let's define and actually draw lines will, pro will wind up being a really important function. So I'm just going to put it at the top so it's easier for us to find. For now, it's going to be super simple. Draw lines. Um, it takes an image and it takes some lines that we're going to draw. Then for line in lines, this is going to return. Like you might think lines would contain. Um, like this, x1, y1, y2, something like that, okay? You might think that's the case. That's not the case. It's like this, and it's a bunch of those, and I'm not sure why, but anyway. So for line in lines, we're gonna say now chords for coordinates equals line zero width, because it's stupid. Now we can reference the lines themselves inside. So then what we can do is cv2.line. This is a way to just literally draw lines on a image. And then you pass the coordinates for the lines. So x1, y1, comma, x2, y2. What is the color of that line? Let's just do 2 v 5 and then uh, the thickness of the line, we'll say three. One would be one pixel, three will be three pixels, so it'll be easier for us to see um, the actual line. Now, for coordinates, that's going to be um, chords zero, one, two, three. Cool. So that's actually just gonna draw it right on the image and the way that OpenCV works is it, it lets you modify the thing. Um, so we don't need to like return it or anything. We're just kind of modifying it. It's kind of strange, but this will actually draw the lines on, on the thing. We actually don't need to like return an image. Um, so that's actually totally cool. We're done. Now, uh, draw lines. Cool. Okay, so I think we're about ready. Let's see what typos I've done today. So let's go ahead and um, run this. I've already kind of made a pretty big mistake, but we'll, I'll get to it. Ah, move. Okay, so we can see there's at least a line there. This already broke. Oh, no, it's still going. Interesting. But it's probably going to break any moment now. Please work. Did it break this time? Let me see here. Yeah, it broke. Okay, so so one error with our logic here is um, here, four line in lines. Well, if it doesn't find any lines, um, that's not gonna work out. So what we need to do is just, just throw this into a try except fight me. <laughs> uh, pass, okay. <laughs> oh, I've committed a horrible sin. All right. So, felt good though. It felt so good. All right. So, hopefully you can Yeah, you should you can see that in the video. So, wow, that guy totally just went around me. What a prick. Anyway, um so you can see there's like lots of little lines here, but it's but not quite what dude. The people of Grand Theft Auto are pretty freaking rude. Um but it's not quite as, it's not quite detecting everything we expected. And again, I'm, that's most likely because of the aliasing that's going on there. It's very jaggedy. So now what we want to do is, let me close this and um, let me bring this back up. So we can fix that with just blurring it a little bit. So blurring is just what it sounds like. You can take like a, a um, like a square of pixels and just kind of like blur it. Like that's basically what it's doing. It's just an algorithm that does that for you. So um, what we'll do is add a Gaussian blur. So you can't see that. <laughs> okay, so before, okay. Anything about this? 
Yeah, we want to we want to definitely blur it after the edges, not before the edges, because then the edges the edge detection would just do a line again. So after the edges, we'd like to blur it. So process ng equals cv two dot Gaussian blur. We are going to blur the processed underscore image. We blur it with a, hmm, I don't remember if it's want square brackets or braces, uh, okay. CV2 dot Gauss, Gaussian blur. I'm Googling it at the moment if it's not clear. Why, okay, let me just pull it over as I'm looking so you guys aren't just bored, I suppose. Let's do this. Gauss. Okay, yeah. So it wants. Okay. <laughs> All right. Let's do it. Where? Where? Where am I? Here we go. Five. So let's. We'll do the five by five. That sounds like a grand plan. Uh, and then what was the last parameter there? A zero. What is a zero? I'm. Mm -mm, I'm not quite sure what that zero is. That'd be nice if, uh, uh, I don't care. Let's throw in the zero. We'll see what happens. I just want some blurring. I don't need to get too fancy about it. Done. Let's move this over now. Let's run this. It's looking good already. It's fine in lines everywhere. Oh, so many lines. <laughs> okay. All right. So now we'll, uh, freeze frame here. Beautiful. So now... Um, if we work, can you see? No, you can't. Oh, yes, you can see my mouse. Very difficultly, though. Oof, it's not very easy. Anyway, um, now we have lines, and my thinking is, uh, using a little bit of logic, we could, well, first of all, we could change the blur a little bit, or we could change the parameters on the actual lines function. So we had the minimum distance, and then we had the max gap. So what we could do is change the <clears throat> change it's, not on screen. it's hard because it's like updating so it keeps pushing me we could change this like min distance to like 50 and then uh, let's just rerun it wow really that didn't make as big of a change as I was kind of expecting well some of these lines are like 100 pixels or something so, so let's let's do 100 then and then we could probably lower the gap wow are you kidding me? Are you, what the hell? This is not even listening to me. Those aren't 100 pixels long. You're full of it. You're just full of it. Maybe it's accounting for the gap and not drawing a No, because it's returning the line. Let's change the gap to five pixels. I think it's in pixels. I swear nothing's changing. <laughs> oh my gosh. Am I, I wonder if I'm doing something wrong. Somebody can, somebody feel free to correct my code. This just feels wrong. Maybe it's, what if we did, so I'm just going to take a few things before I just quit life. It's a little better, I guess, but not that much better. It's very frustrating. Um, anyway, I'm going to return back to, let's do. What was the initial settings? Let's do let's do like 3015. That should be probably good enough. Um, despite this being relatively eh, um, my idea is to we can tweak this a little bit if we need to. But my idea is to like if we just take some of the longest lines, or even better, we could take. Um, there's a lot of little things we can do to probably improve this. Like. What, what are the longest lines? What are the bestish like looking lines? What like where are most of the lines taking place? Something like that where um, you could take like slope and um, um, bias. You could take slope and bias. What lines have some very similar slope and biases? So like for example, this there's a bunch of lines right here that are pretty close to each other, and then here these are quite a few lines here. Unfortunately, there's a lot out here. 
um, that I'm not really too happy about. There's definitely some tweaking that's going to need to go on. Um, I'm going to change 2015. Try that again. Anyway, there's definitely some tweaking that will need to go on, but there's definitely some also some logic that we could throw into here to make this be a little more accurate. Um, anyway, um, I'm going to go ahead and cut this one off here. Uh, and I think maybe in the next video, I'll try to get us to come up with some way of determining the lanes. Um, and then that'll probably, uh, I'll probably try to figure out from there whether or not we should move to coming up with more rules or if we could try to make an AI at that point. I don't know. So anyways, questions, comments, suggestions, whatever, leave them below. Again, all the code will be on GitHub. If you have ideas for improvement, share them with us. So uh, before we go, let me just pull, let me close, stop this, and then just show you show you the ending. Um, but it, it, like I said, everything will be up on GitHub. But basically, the ending hue lines was uh, you know for the threshold 180, 2015. There we can modify a few other things. But first, let's just try to come up with some sort of logic that will pick a lane. And then if we're having a problem at that point, uh, we can come back to this. I also, I can't, I can't remember how fast those loops, those loops were. Let's see what our frames are. So we're paying a decent penalty on frame rate already. About, mm, what are we getting, like five frames a second now? So we'll have to see on that one how the, how we can hopefully somehow improve that. I'm trying to think, we'll I'll have to look through this and see if I can come up with a better way to make this more efficient. First, let's do the lanes, and then from there, we'll see what we can do about dumbing this down. But that might be another reason why we might want to go the the AI route, where strange as strange as it might be, uh, we can run that on the GPU. It, it might be actually faster that way. But anyway, a lot of stuff to think about. I'm going to cut it here. In the next tutorial, we will do our best to try to find some lanes. Probably what I come up with won't be the best, and hopefully somebody can come up with something that is a little more um, robust than what I'm going to I'm going to push out. But we'll see what happens. And until next time.